Hi guys and welcome to my live stream. If I say it, it must be true. So we're gonna get started on a bunch of truths. Truth number one. Gabby sucks that right in. You shut up. Truth number two. The kids never listen. Quiet. Hi guys. Hello. Well, welcome to today's extra video. This one is a part two of our um, tri trials and tribulations of buying a horse. This is uh, Sam's baby. This is all about horse brokers and how it severely affected our horse buying experience. If you guys have been following our channel, you know that it was based on our journey to finding our very first horse and we have subsequently bought two horses now and um, we he wants to tell you guys. We probably guys, won't be able to buy another one because after this video, we're not going to find another one. No <laughs> this one's going to sell one to us. This makes me nervous. And I wanted to do this video a long time ago because I'm telling you, there's a lot of brokers out there. Yeah. And there's and a lot of people that will buy a horse and sell it for more money. And, you know, sometimes they're not a broker. Sometimes they're a farmer that just ends up buying a horse and selling it for more money. Yeah, so like I said in our last video, there are some good brokers that buy, house, buy horses that need rehabilitating, put some training on them, and then sell them for more money, and we get that. We understand that. Um, if you buy Okay, I'm going to put a kibosh on that. Okay. Yeah, kibosh, and that means that if it's a rescue, then I'm not going to consider them a broker because those are the people that rescue the horse, train it, Give it to a good home. Make it better and then they finally find a good home for it and they're a whole totally different yeah. than a broker. A broker is somebody who just picks up a horse for really cheap, latches onto it and sells it on for more money and makes up all these lies about it and things like that. All right, so let's get on with the video. This is Sam's video. You guys, if you're gonna hate anybody in this video. Hate me. Hate him because this is, this is not my video. Okay, so... Um, Number one thing about brokers is that they buy all the horses. Like they they scour the websites, they live on Facebook, they are in the know all the time because they are always watching. They, you can, unless it, it's a full-time job for them, right? Right, so basically, if you're looking for a horse and you're searching the classified ads or Facebook ads or Kijiji or equine now or some horse of those clicks. horse clicks they usually are the ones that will respond to them very quickly and if you really want to see how fast they'll respond just put a fake ad up yourself and say i got a thousand dollar horse and, and make it the most perfect. beautiful horse ever put a beautiful picture of a horse and put that it's child friendly it's put all the good information on it and you'll see, see how, how fast, fast they'll click on it and want to buy it and try and get a reduced price for yeah, it yeah well. so that really severely reduces the amount of horses that are out there for people like us genuinely looking for a horse um and yeah we can still buy the horse from a broker at double triple quadruple the price so basically a uh, $2000 horse that is bought by a broker is going to be for 4500 um we found that anything that has kid friendly in front of it is 4500 to 8000 dollars from a broker right right another oh. thing to note is if you're on uh if you're like this what this is an example that happened to me an ad went up right away. It was a Kijiji ad. Was it Kijiji? No, it was a Facebook ad. And I responded right away. And so did a whole lot of other people. And eventually, someone contacted me and said, Are you looking for a horse? Because I got a horse for you. And blah, 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 blah. And um, broker right there. Yeah, so so people got to know that we were looking for a horse in the classified section. They saw us always looking for a horse, and we were approached by a few brokers saying, hey, I'll find you a horse, 
and that's another way that they not um, even that they said they even had a horse for us yeah so they can try and dump their horse on us yeah okay another thing that we found about brokers and this is the one that really really bothered sam is they lie imagine that they lie who would ever lie about their horse so Anyways, so they, yeah, Sorry. Okay, so basically, um, when we went to look at horses that were owned by brokers or that brokers were selling, um, they'd say, okay, well, what are you looking for? And we'd say, well, we, you know, we have a, we are looking for a hunter prospect for our eight-year-old daughter. And then everything we said, their horse fit the, the match. They made every story about the horse fit what we needed. So it didn't matter if the horse was half wild. They, it didn't matter if the horses, like a lot of times, or a few of the times, they had just gotten the horse in. Um, they get the horse in, they run it up and down the road, they take it for a spin, and then they fix a story to the horse. And it's not all brokers, but that happened to us like several times. Yes, and I'll give you several good examples uh, throughout our channel, and oh you're going to hate us about it, but here it goes. No, no hate you. You're going to hate me about it, but here it goes. Here's one. We go visit this nice gray horse. No, no, no. We go visit this nice horse. This nice gray horse. No. We go visit this nice horse. You should leave that in there. And we go visit this horse. It's perfect for kids. She's selling it for somebody else. She's a horse trainer herself. <clears throat> we get there at a specific time that she set. Um, and there was a re good reason why. Um, she set that time. We didn't find out till after. <clears throat> we went into the barn to see this nice horse. It was a tall horse. It was nice, really nice looking. The color I loved. And all of a sudden, Oh, do you, would you want to brush the horses? The girls say, yeah, we want to brush the horses. So Sophie gets brushing. And Sophie says, why is it wet on its back? And why is it wet under its belly? And and here is a good example of a lie. Well, we're in a barn. It's just sweating. It's kind of hot out for them. And it was and it early that, in it the was spring. It wasn't even early, that hot. early in the spring. It was. It was not a warm there day. There was still snow on the ground. <laughs> Anyways, um, <clears throat> girls rode these horses. Well, first the person, the owner, rode the horse. Then the girls rode the horse, and we noticed that it was way too fast for us. Like the girls did not ride the horse well. They were both afraid. They both did badly riding it. It was very obvious to us that that there's no way that our kids could ride this horse. And so, um, obviously we didn't buy the horse, but then the very next day... No, no, we'll just wait. We'll get to it later. Then we talked to our coach and we said, listen, this horse was like fast. And it was also, which is weird, was sweating in the barn. And... We didn't know at the time, but now we do, and hopefully you'll know, that we were told maybe they ran it around before. Yeah, 100%. To calm it down they rode the horse before out. we got there, and it, it was only <laughs> wet along its neck, under its belly, where the girth goes, and where the saddle goes. It's, so, I mean, for it to be as, as wet as it was, they rode it. They rode the horse. That's but right. So, lying about why the horse was wet. Should so, set up some bells. Yeah, and then... Um, <clears throat> and then afterwards, we saw the exact same ad for the horse. And it says, oh, kid-friendly, ridden by an 8-year-old and a 10-year-old. Yeah. So and even uh, though our kids did not ride it well, did not ride it safely, did not... It wasn't really kid-friendly. The ad like, changed the very next day, and it said... And it said... Written, written by, by an 8 year old and a 10 year old and so I was, it was very thinking, misleading. at what point do you just go to the person and say you, better, you should take that down because you got a wild horse there. Yeah it wasn't a wild horse it just wasn't appropriate for, it wasn't for appropriate. kids. For, it's not even appropriate for an 8 or 10 year old anyways but the ad said 8 and a 10 year old wrote it. Okay that's one lie. Lots of lies I'm gonna it's all it's all gonna be out here on the line now all the oh lies. My gosh. Line number two, which one do you want to start with? Oh, we go see two horses. One is expensive. One's like eight, eight thousand, nine thousand dollars, and one is like four thousand, five thousand dollars. We get riding them. The kids get riding them. Oh, these are, yeah. One kid can't control the one horse, the other kid can control the other one. And back and forth, they're 
both riding these two horses. The one we really wanted was the expensive one, but it didn't seem like the right fit. The one that was the good one was the non-expensive one, which is, I'm like, all right, that even fits my budget anyways, because I didn't want to buy an expensive horse. So what happens next? We bring the horse home. Oh my God, you can't say that. Yes, I'm saying it. We bring the horse home and you got to leave this in. We bring the horse home, we put a deposit, we can't even ride the horse. And it's not, it's not the horse's fault because we understand some horses need time to be in that. New in our new environment, it could have been stuck there for, for days or whatever else. But so we did ask to do a vet check because the vet was down anyways. And the vet looked it over five seconds after looking at it. He said, I'm not going to look at it any further. And he told us the reason why, but we never, did we tell the owner why? Yeah. Yeah. We told the owner why. Yeah. It wasn't a good situation. No. There were some of the times that we found a lot of inconsistencies in what people were saying. Some of it was based on the fact that what they thought was a kid-friendly horse and what we thought was a kid-friendly horse um, were... There's only one kind of kid-friendly horse. It's but... either kid-friendly or it's not. Here's another example. Oh, kid-friendly horse. This is a very kid-friendly oh, horse. God. Let's go and drive, spend our three and four hours to get there to look at this kid-friendly horse. We get to the kid-friendly horse place. And something else to be aware of, where are you going? What, what the barn looks like? Because the barn to me was un, to me it was unsafe. Like you don't have chains on the walls holding your horse there. I mean, the horse looked really calm. You gotta, be, you gotta watch out too, because sometimes I heard stories of people drug their horse so it looks really, really calm. And it actually happened to a girl at our barn, remember? Yeah. They bought a, they went and they looked at this horse. It was really, really calm, nice and calm. They took it home and it was a wild bucking bronco and uh, for sure they thought it was drugged when they saw it. Yeah. But anyways, we go see this horse. It looks nice. It's really calm. I said to Laura, is this horse drugged? <laughs> Because it's acting like Storm. I legitimately, really? it was so naive. And that's one of the I reasons said, that Sam wanted to make this because video. Because it was so calm. It Sam, was so calm. One of the reasons Sam wanted to make so, this video was because I naturally think that people will tell the truth. And and when people say, oh yeah, my horse was drunk when I bought it, I never believe it. I always think people are overreacting, that it's not really true. But what we saw, you guys, was so crazy. And it was the norm, not the exception. It, the, when we went to see horses that were not falsely... Not advertised properly, anyway. When we went to see horses that were the normal, like when we actually saw a horse that was represented properly, um, it was it was like we bought the horses. That's how many times we saw horses that that that's how many times we had a favorable viewing of a horse, right? Right. Two yeah. times out of all the horses that we went to see. And, and so many things we didn't say because we don't want to hurt people. We don't want to hurt their livelihood. We don't want to hurt the sale of their but horse. But they shouldn't be saying lies okay so we go see this horse nice calm i said gabby pick up its feet because you know if it's lame or anything it's not going to want you to pick up its feet if it do you remember yeah so we, we picked up the first the front hooves not too bad the back hooves didn't not like it bad. didn't like it at all and i i was given an excuse why i didn't like to pick up the back hooves likes to move before it picks up the back hoof. There's nowhere like for it to move. Like yeah, like Storm. But anyways, so that was one, uh, that was one thing that... It was really hard for us because every time we saw something that was inconsistent with the story that the seller was telling us about the horse, they always had another story to cover it up. So um, we moved, we had our kids move around the horse. We had our kids lifting up the feet. And when the horse kicked out at us, there was always a reason, something we did wrong that made the horse kick out at us. So because we are not super experienced, I always gave the people the benefit of the doubt every single time up until the point where the horse 
ran off with my kid and could have killed her. Like, seriously could have killed her. Right. So, you know, safety thing. Okay, we'll, ta we'll take it for a walk to the area. We'll test it. But you have to stay far behind. <laughs> Why do I have to stay far behind? I can walk, like, right beside Storm. I can walk right beside Sophie's new horse at the butt and it won't, wouldn't do anything. But I have to walk far behind this horse and that should sell, set up a bell too. Like, it, why? Because it's going to kick me? They should tell me it's going to kick you. Yeah. They should know that it's not friendly. So this kid safe horse, the rider got, we, whenever time we go see a horse, we always allow the owner to get on the horse first to see what it's like because you don't want them to get on this wild horse and think no I'm not going to throw Gabby or Sophie on there or my kids on there right I'll throw Laura on there but she doesn't want to do it yeah <laughs> anyway so in this case the rider was riding the horse it was it seemed kind of speedy fast it was really fast, fast. and speedy and uh right away I'm like well it's kind of fast speedy the owner says Ah, she likes to ride her horses fast all the time. She likes to ride it fast. And I'm thinking, okay, being naive that I am and trusting the person, okay, fine. Are we going to get Gabby on this thing now? Because we're going to put our most experienced rider out of the group on it. Maybe I should have rode it. But anyways, yeah, she probably would never walk that fast. Anyways, as soon as I said it, as soon as Laura said, Gabby, are you going to ride it? I saw the person on the horse take a look at the owner and give a strange look and that should have been number two tell don't put Gabby on that horse should have been a tell I should have known <coughs> anyways we put Gabby on the horse and it didn't want to stand for her to get on the horse that was number three should have known not to put Gabby on the horse right yeah it's really hard and though. then that's the horse that took off with Gabby and I really want to show you the footage because it's an amazing feat that Gabby stayed yeah, on that Yeah, Gabby horse. did amazing. And she we are going like to show a... that footage after that horse is sold and after, you know, it all dies down. I don't we... think that horse will ever be sold. It will. Well, yeah, not as a kid-friendly <coughs> horse anyways. But uh, now oh I'm glad that we did that because now we have a Halloween costume for Gabby this year. She's going to be a tree. <laughs> She's going to be a tree. <laughs> In equestrian outfit. So that, that was like three tells on that one. Most of the horses that we saw um, you, for brokers, um, there were so many warnings that the stories did not line up. But we it's hard felt to talk about. bad. Like, it, it, we felt bad. Like, we didn't want to say to the people, oh, well, you know, you just told me not to walk behind your kid's safe horse. So we're leaving. Like we wanted to buy a horse. We wanted to give them the benefit of the debt. We wanted to trust them. And, and we never for a second felt like, like, I just still can't believe all the things that happened when we were looking for horses. Like people would send me videos of their kid safe horse and I would send them to our instructor, which was, we couldn't go look at a horse without her approval. And she would be like, um, yeah, that kid safe horse that they are trying to sell you is wearing a bit and all this stuff on it to keep it from going fast. And it was still going fast in the video. Oh yeah. And I forgot to mention the way the horse was moving his head that day. <laughs> Always jerking his head. Yeah. There was something, there was wrong. something wrong with that yeah. horse. I said, how did that nice, calm horse all of a sudden turn into a nice nightmare? What other horses did we see? Um, so the last thing oh, I... Wait, 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 was there any other horses that we see? I, okay, there's different types of brokers, right? You got the broker that is an instructor. They teach somewhere else. They have their own farm, but they teach somewhere else. Then they go and get these horses off of people and they try and sell them for more. And, there's and obviously farmers out there that'll sell their horse and he, you know yeah it's kid safe we went to one place to look at a nice supposedly nice calm horse because that was the 
That was the second one on that day we went to go see. Yeah, and the man said <laughs> the man. that it what could be the ad said it could be broke or it could be ridden or driven, and it was a really nice horse. And um, so he he didn't want to talk on the um, texting. He wanted us to call him. So I called him from the car and I said, "Okay, I just want to confirm that your horse is kid friendly." And he uh, screamed at me. And said, I don't believe in that crazy kind of talk. And I was like, Do you well, want to okay. ride a horse or not? Do you want to ride a horse or not? I'm like, Well, yeah, we want to buy a horse. And in the area. So. Yeah, and we should. I like, yeah. I, I said to Sam, like, We're not buying that horse. Like, we can go and see. Maybe it will be like a lucky day and something will like click, but it was not our lucky day. That horse had never had a saddle on it. Um, he got out an old saddle and said, Oh, this this should fit. Get up there. And we were like, No, I'm I don't think it's gonna Gabby happen. Gabby was terrified to ride that horse. Sophie, and Sophie yeah. was the trooper and she was gonna ride that thing. <laughs> oh, no, we pulled the But plug. as soon as we took Sophie and the horse to the parking lot, the horse didn't want nothing to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> so we pulled the plug on that, we said, Sorry, we're gonna go. Yeah. Anybody can be a broker. It, People who I we think... could sell a horse. We place where we bought Sophie's horse had three horses for sale. The prices were so low. Um, they sold the in the first two days. He had three horses. They sold in two days. You guys, they sold right away. Um, the prices were so cheap. We could have bought all three of those horses, brought them home to our barn, and sold them again to somebody Ours else. Ours was the most expensive one. Ours was three. the most expensive out of and them all. They, uh, other two, you can tell they were, well, the cheapest one was so really nice, but would you, This is my question. Would you feel comfortable buying a horse from us? Because we don't know very much. Would you feel comfortable? you probably feel comfortable buying Storm from us because we've had Storm for a long time. You've got to see Storm move. You've got to see, you know what you're going to get. Would you feel comfortable if we bought a horse, brought it to our barn and said, hey, we have a horse for sale. It's probably really good for kids. It's so kind. It's so easy to ride. And then would, would you feel comfortable buying a horse from us? From in that situation? Probably not. And that's the situation that we were finding ourselves in continuously. And there are no horses in our area, um, in our price range for beginners or even a little bit above beginners. There are none. There are none in our price range. We have friends looking for horses we know so many people trying to buy horses and none of them can afford them because all the ones that are affordable are snatched up in an instant by brokers and the price raised drastically or they're actually bought by schools and or the used schools, in schools buy them so. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah like i don't know why do you want to make this video i want to make this video because i just want if you're going to look for a horse just watch out for these brokers and a lot of times you can tell that they're not a broker. Like, for example, when uh, we heard by word of mouth that there was this horse available and we jumped on it right away and it was Storm. I mean, she was worried about where the horse was going to go. Yeah. She was really worried about where the horse was going to go because the horse was never owned by a kid before and this and that, right? She was yeah. skeptical about selling this horse to us. She wasn't skeptical about selling her horse to us. She cared about where her horse went. Yeah. Like we interviewed the horse, but she interviewed us to That's make right. sure that we were okay. She knew our instructor and so she was good with it. But I mean, we knew he was gonna be a good horse because she cared where he went and she stood behind him. The reason that Sam really wanted to make this video and I don't even know that it's much different than the last video we made, but he really wanted it to um, share with you guys what we went through with the whole broker situation. The broker situation was so, it, it, it affected us in such a huge way. Like we still have nightmares about what happened to Gabby um, and you guys don't even know the whole story. Like um, we tried to keep a lot of stuff hidden um, to protect people. Um, I don't even think they deserve to be protected because if they're going to lie to you and say this is a safe horse, then it's not a safe horse. Like, why would they do that? Why would they put your kids in danger and say something like that? The risk of being sued. Yeah. Um. I mean, we got a lot of flack for that one. We didn't even post a video and we got a lot of flack for that one video. No. Say, and they were lying, like, oh, the girl on the horse was underage, but meanwhile she told me she was an adult and told me what age she was. Yeah. Like, 
What the hell? Like, I don't know. Like, how do you um, even say that online? Like, how do you say that? They're a bunch of them freaking liars, man. They're liars. They should be all taken to court. Yeah, and that's the thing. How do you even have any recourse when... Um, yeah, the other thing is there's no recourse when you buy a horse from a broker. I mean... When you bring your horse home and you're super excited and it is not the horse that you thought you were going to get. Not the horse that they sold you. Not the horse that they told you. Right? Right. And, and you don't get much time to decide. There's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to go to to complain, to make a complaint about it. I mean, if it, if a dog is abused and stuff like that, you can go to SPCA or or other places and complain about dogs. There's probably a place for horse yeah, horses. Yeah, you can complain about horses if they're abused, but how do you complain about a person lying about selling their horse? Yeah. Anyway, I hope sharing... the advertising network. I hope that... Um, uh, by sharing our story and hearing how like it takes a lot for Sam to get that jaded and that upset and we have friends who are looking for horses right now and it's legitimately the hardest thing we have spent so many hours looking for a horse waiting th weeding through all the ads all the horses that would be kid friendly and what we ended up with was a big huge pile of a mess and um when it involves your kids and animals like we love our horses like uh, already we love so Sophia's horse and um it's just hard it was just a really hard experience and um yeah so Sam wanted to share it with you so you guys know that where we live it's not everywhere in Europe they don't have brokers in Europe they don't call them brokers do you think they still have them yeah they have them everywhere yeah people Are you should a broker? be account they should be accountable should be accountable for, for what you sell yeah, but anyway, we're gonna end this video because there's a lot of, um, there's already a lot of footage and it's gonna take me forever to edit. I don't even know if this video is gonna make it to see the light of day because Sam was not super candid and just take what he said with a grain of salt because it's his opinion Watch and it is his videos. experience. It's his own, it was our own experience. You may not have the same experience, but that's the experience that we had, right? All right, that is it for today, you guys. I wish I could show you all the videos. All the things that all went wrong. All the things that actually like, went wrong. We did not show you not all the things that went wrong on a lot of our trials. Yeah, and at the Which end, is... we went to, I think at the end were all the worst trials. The ones we didn't video, do you think? Yeah, we stopped videoing after. And, and then they just got went downhill from there. But anyway, that is it. And we'll see you in the next video. I think that's it for Sam, though. I don't think I'm going to invite him back anymore. Hey, you can comment below. I'll try and answer. Any questions you have. If you want specific examples, I might throw a little clip in there. <laughs> um, see you guys later. But probably not, because... Because I, I will not let him. All right, see All you guys right. later. Bye. Bye. I don't know, because this is the whole point. You're supposed to talk about that stuff. It's like crap that you can't talk about people selling their horse. You have to. You have to, man. And don't forget to make sure to hit that subscribe button down below.